This is the second video on our examination of how a change in the conditions uh, affects the equilibrium constant. In the prior video, we have seen that a catalyst actually does not change the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction, it only makes the reaction go faster. In the second video, we'll look at the effect of a temperature uh, change in uh, the value of the equilibrium constant. Now, the temperature will affect uh, the equilibrium constant, and we can actually see that right away by simply uh, examining what the equation that we have used to calculate the equilibrium constant is. Notice that this equation has an explicit dependence on the temperature. All right, so we're actually going to try to see uh, if we can come up with an equation that will pr allow us to predict uh, uh, the value of an equilibrium constant at a temperature of choice uh, if we know what the equilibrium constant is at a different temperature, uh, which is usually going to be 298 Kelvin. All right, so uh, let's see. We can actually take natural logs of this expression and call this uh, the natural log of the equilibrium constant at the temperature T2 would be equal to E to the minus delta RG naught R over T2. Okay, this will be our choice uh, temperature, uh, the temperature at which we want to calculate what the equilibrium constant is. Okay, and then we can uh, compare how this changes from uh, a temperature at which we know uh, what the equilibrium constant is, RT1. Okay, notice that the expression is the same, the only thing that changes is this temperature that you have in these denominators and then this uh, subindex to just differentiate to equilibrium constants. Okay, so again, uh, this uh, a consolidation of this expression is going to allow us to calculate our equilibrium constant, for example, at a temperature of 310 Kelvin, physiological temperature, from a temperature from which we have the equilibrium constant. This will normally be 298 Kelvin, and that is because we have tables in which we can calculate the uh, reaction Gibbs energy from the Gibbs energy formations of species, and again, those are usually uh, given at 298 Kelvin, and what that means is that we can always calculate uh, the equilibrium constant at 298 Kelvin. All right, so uh, actually this is not correct. Notice that I've taken logarithms on the left-hand side of the expression, but not on the right-hand side of the expression, right? So uh, the way that this actually looks is like this minus delta RG standard state over RT2, and then minus delta RG standard state over RT1. Okay, this expression is not correct. All right, uh, what we also know is that this uh, Gibbs energy can be uh, deconvoluted into enthalpy and entropy terms. Okay, so we can write this as minus uh, delta RH standard state over RT2 minus minus uh, uh, T delta S, which in this case is going to be plus uh, T delta RS over RT2. And the same thing is going to happen here. Okay, so again, notice that delta RG will be delta H minus T delta S, so that with this negative sign right here, it's going to be minus delta H plus uh, T delta S. All right, so delta RH, the standard state over RT1, plus T delta RS, over RT1. All right, so to consolidate this expression, what we can actually do is uh, subtract the bottom expression from the, top ex from the top expression, and then what we'll have is the following. Natural log of K at T2 minus the natural log of K at T1 is going to be equal to uh, the following. Okay, notice that uh, that will be T2, this will be T1, so these two terms cancel out. All right, and then you have delta RS at the standard state over R, delta RS at the standard state over R, so all those two terms are gonna cancel each other out when you actually uh, carry out the subtraction. All right, so this is going to be equal to minus delta RH at the standard state over RT2 minus, minus delta RH at the standard state over RT1. Okay, then we can rewrite this expression as the following. Natural log of KT2 over KT1 is equal to taking common factor of minus delta RH at the center state over R. Okay. This transforms into the following. Okay. That is the expression that tells you how the equilibrium constant of a process changes with temperature. Okay, notice that the change in temperature is actually only dictated by uh, the exothermicity or endothermicity of the reaction. Okay, the entropy does not play a role. 
Now there is a key approximation in the derivation of this expression, and that is that we're assuming that the value of delta Rh and delta Rs, the enthalpy and the entropy in the, in the reaction, we're assuming that those values do not change with temperature. And we actually know that that is not true. For example, Kirchhoff's law is an expression that allows you to calculate how the reaction gives energy changes with temperature. And we've also seen other examples earlier in the semester in which we have seen how the, uh, the entropy changes with temperature. Okay, so that is an approximation that we're taking right here uh, to assume that those values do not change. The approximation, however, is valid if the change in temperature is not very large. Again, for example, if you're interested in seeing how the uh, equilibrium constant changes from 298 ke Kelvin room temperature to 310 Kelvin, which is uh, physiological temperature, that change is only 12 degrees. And the actual uh, changes to the entropies and the enthalpies of the reactions will be very small, uh, even negligible. Okay, so that approximation is actually quite sound, again, when your changes in temperature are very small. Now, uh, uh, the way that you, this is usually explained in other courses, uh, including general chemistry, is to appeal to uh, the Le Chatelier principle. And the statement of the Le Chatelier principle is as follows. An equilibrium uh, will, be, uh, will readjust itself upon a change so that the disturbance of the change is minimized. Okay, so let's see uh, what that means uh, in the context of this expression. All right, what we're going to do is uh, apply this uh, equation to our reaction A to the B. These could be solutes or they could be gases. Okay, let's assume that they're solutes. Okay. And then we're going to uh, see what happens if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. All right, so we're going to plot here uh, what the change, what the enthalpy of the reaction would be Okay, as we go from A to B. Now let's first assume that the reaction is exothermic. Okay, so uh, uh, you will have bury like that, and then uh, the enthalpy of products will be less than the enthalpy of reagents. This is what we call the reaction coordinate. Okay, so what happens is that when the reaction proceeds left to right, then energy is released into the medium. Okay? On the contrary, if the reaction proceeds uh, from the right to left, from that perspective, this reaction is, is endothermic. So what that means is that energy is absorbed from the surroundings, so the reaction can climb over the barrier and end up in a situation that is of higher enthalpy. All right, so let's see if actually this pans out uh, in this particular case. Okay, so we're going to assume here the temperature T2 is greater than the temperature T1. Okay, and we're going to see here what happens to the equilibrium constant. Well, if T2 is greater than T1, then what happens is that all of these parentheses will be negative. Okay? Now, if we assume that the reaction is exothermic, so we're going in this direction, what that means is that uh, this uh, delta H here is negative. Negative with negative will be positive, but then you have this negative sign right here. What that will mean is that what you have over here is that there are all of this term to the right hand side will be a negative uh, sign, have, will have a negative sign. And what that means is that uh, the value of the green constant at T2 should be lower than the value of the green constant at T1. Okay, remember that the equilibrium constant is going to be equal to the concentration of B uh, at equilibrium over the concentration of A at equilibrium divided by the reference states, which we're not going to uh, uh, put here for, for simplicity. And again, what we're saying is that when you increase the temperature, this should be smaller. And what that means is that, well, you actually have that uh, uh, there's more A than B at higher temperature than a low temperature. How can we actually justify that? Well, when you increase the temperature, you're putting more and more energy into the reaction medium, right? So again, the question is now, well, how is the equilibrium going to evolve? Are you going to uh, uh, move from right to left, or from, uh, from left to right, or from right to left? Well, if you have more energy in the medium, then, uh, and you want to dis uh, minimize the disturbance uh, caused by that change, then what you like to do is absorb that excess of energy that has been placed in the reaction medium. And the way to absorb energy is to actually uh, go from right to left, because that requires uh, uh, to supply some energy. Okay? Well, what that means is that the concentration of B is going to become smaller, and the concentration of A is going to be, uh, become greater when you increase the temperature. Ultimately, what that means is that this number is smaller, this number is greater, and then the gate constant decreases, which is exactly what we had uh, uh, 
provided right here. Okay, so uh, this seems to uh, carry out with the predictions of our Chatelier principle. Right, so we can actually then uh, take a look at uh, an opposite uh, case in which we will have that uh, the reaction will be endothermic. Okay, let's see if we can predict what will happen here when you increase the temperature. All right, when you increase the temperature, uh, what will happen is that this parenthesis is going to be negative. Now, uh, delta to the reaction in this case is positive, that's an endothermic reaction. Okay, so positive with negative will be negative, but then you have a negative sign right here, which will make uh, the term to the right-hand side of the equation uh, positive. Okay, and what that means is that for an endothermic reaction, when you increase the temperature, then the equilibrium constant goes up. Okay, if the equilibrium constant goes up, that means you have less of this and more uh, of that. Okay, let's see if we can actually explain that with this uh, enthalpy diagram. Again, what you're trying to do here is uh, uh, increase the temperature. And what that means is that, there's, that, is that there's going to be more energy in the reaction medium. Uh, the way that the, uh, this equilibrium can change to minimize that excess of thermal energy would be to absorb it. Okay, and notice that uh, uh, the only way for this reaction to absorb energy will be to crank more A into B. The backward reaction, B into A, will not minimize uh, the amount of uh, energy that you have. Instead, it will supply more because it would be exothermic, B to A. But A to B is endothermic, which, which means that you can absorb some of that extra energy that you have now that you have increased the temperature, okay, and minimize that disturbance. Okay, so again, notice that if you actually go from the left to the right in this case, what will happen is you have less of A and more of B. When you come to the equilibrium, less of A, more of B would be putting the equilibrium constant increases, which is exactly what we had predicted with this expression. Okay, so uh, this tells you how the equilibrium constant is modified by the temperature. Okay, and again, notice that that is just uh, carried out by the value and the sign of the reaction enthalpy. Okay.